Welcome to my studio. I'm Ron Hevener, and these little friends of mine are collie puppies about seven weeks old. One of them has a secret. Can you guess which one? Her master had waited patiently for this night. Carefully, he had planned the birth of the puppies that were to be his greatest achievement. Week after week, he had taken great care of the beautiful Collie as they approached this night. She was a champion. Tracing all the way back to the best dog he had ever known, she carried the hope of her bloodline and the honor of a kennel name going all the way back to 1940. Her master smiled with hope as she neared the special moment when new life would enter the world and refresh their lives. Things would be good. Things would be beautiful. Things would be perfect. This is a beautiful collie. Let's call her Annie. Annie has been waiting patiently for nine weeks to surprise her master with the greatest gift that she can give. Let's give Annie a beautiful ruff like Collie's have. Collie breed, the Collie breed is an old breed and the Collie Club of America in this country goes back over a hundred years. It was one of the first purebred breed clubs to join the American Kennel Club. Siani taking shape. Her face in here. The ruff that the breed is known for swooping back from her face like an Elizabethan collar. And let's see. We bring her front legs. The, the collies have a beautiful full ruff around like a lion's mane around their heads that we brush forward make it look full. And there are, are two varieties of collies. There's, there's rough collies like this one here, like Annie is, and there is um, the smooth variety. And smooth collies are short haired and the hair, the texture of the hair should be rough. Not silky, but rough. Coarse, coarse. Now Annie has just had puppies. So these puppies are about, oh, about this big. And let's put one puppy right here, right there. The tail of a collie is called its brush. And when a when a collie, a mother collie, has her puppies, a lot of times we trim the, the hair um, along her belly and her back legs so that her little puppies don't get tangled up in it. Collies have beautiful ears. Give Annie some beautiful ears. The ears of a collie are a special shape. They're they're shaped like um, it's called tulip. Uh, what it means, 
And I don't know why they choose that word, but what it means is that the ear tips over somewhat, a little bit like that. Many, many works of art have been inspired by Kali's over the years. Some of you in your collections might have um, figurines made by the Royal Dalton Company or other artists and designers from Europe and a few good ones here in the United States. And they might be made of porcelain or some other form of ceramic or carved from wood. And what we'll do while this dries is we'll play with the texture of the hair. But she's taking shape and coming to life. and her puppies. Now let's bring this up just a little bit because the collie's muzzle shouldn't be just down like that. It should be just, it should be nice and parallel. The, the planes that, from where my brush is, the plane here and should be parallel with the plane of the skull. And I can see here that Annie needs a little bit more back skull, what we call back skull. There you go. That's where she thinks brain power. A lot of writers, particularly some of our most loved dog writers from the 1940s, 30s, and thereabouts would write about the Collie and they would say that, they would tell us how different the Collie is from other breeds of dog. And they would say that uh, Collies have a sixth sense, very much like a wolf. And they would say that the uh, a lot of people feel that the skull of the Collie is more like a wolf than any other dog. And a lot of that has to do with this area of the, the skull, the back skull. It's a bone that protrudes up just a little bit. All right, now let's see. Annie is reaching toward one of her puppies. So I'm going to bring her a little bit like this and let's move her a little bit more forward. And twist the clay just a little bit so she can looking at one of her puppies. Is it taking shape? Now we'll let this piece dry for a while. Here we have Annie and the clay has had a Annie with her puppies and the, the clay has had a chance to dry and now we carve in details and you can see I've already started carving in the hair Each hair has to be carved in by hand to give a feeling of realism <clears throat> to the uh, sculpture. And this can take hours and hours to do. And it's very interesting because you, you, you bring an idea. Nobody can see the idea except you. You're the only one. And clay 
is soft and pliable. So it's it's um, fascinating to to watch an idea come through in clay or a painting or something like that that um, you can see and the others around you can't until you're finished with it. Oh, look at this little one here. What is it about that puppy? And this is the stage when the signature goes in. hair as it grows um, and you carve it in is almost layered. You, you start generally at the bottom of the figure and you, you work your way up to the top. So you start low and then work your way up so that each carving, each layer that you, that you carve out lays over the one underneath it. Annie so far. The next step in making a figurine is to paint with a paintbrush, paint latex, and it's the awful stinking smelling stuff, and we paint it over top of the figure. So if you imagine that this water is latex, we, we, st we start and very carefully we press the latex into all the details, all the crevices that have been carved in. And we, we paint it over the entire piece. When it dries, and we do this for several layers, when it dries over the sculpture, it looks like this. and we wait until it's just cured enough. We have to make a casing, a shell. This is called the mother mold. And we make this with plaster so that they fit together like this. Now, we pour our liquid casting material. In this case, it's um, something called hydrostone, means water stone. And when it sets, when it hardens, it heats up to a high temperature. When it hardens, we peel the rubber mold off and we have a casting of the design. So that's Annie and her puppies. And now she's ready to be painted and really brought to life. What we're going to do for Annie is we're going to use watercolors to bring out the dimension and bring out some of the details that we've carved into her sculpture. So we'll wet the figure. Mix our colors. Annie is a sable. She's a sable collie. We'll use some yellow ochre, different shades of umber, and we'll find the color that Annie should be. And we'll start with a light, we'll start with a lighter shade and we'll gradually work darker.
Stories about collies have inspired books like Lassie Come Home, The Blue Ribbon, some great movies, and this figurine. And of course, we all remember television shows of collies. Laying down the golden colors, the golden shades of sable. Collies are natural herding dogs, and over the years they've been raised and trained to care for their master's flock of sheep or goats or other animals. Even puppies show a born instinct for herding. They're loyal, brave, and intelligent. and leaving her white ruff, her beautiful white ruff, her collar, white collar. And let's see, Annie is on a, a blanket, um, an old scrubby old blanket that's one of her favorites. And we'll make it kind of a neutral shade of gray. People and dogs just go together, and that's natural. It's natural for us to love dogs because they keep our feelings going strong and they keep our feelings alive. It's hard not to feel good when you have a good dog to love. And people who have dogs can be a lot of fun. With a dog like a collie, you can join clubs and you can make new friends. Every breed of dog, just like the collie, has a national club, a national association. And the Collie Club of America, every year it has a national show and you can see hundreds of dogs there and make new friends from all over the world. We'll touch up the white around Annie's collar. and her legs. And the tip of her tail. Some of Annie's puppies Collies come in different colors. They're sable, they can be white with sable markings. They can be a beautiful blue merle that's a, a shade of, of gray with black marbling through it. And they can also be what's called a tricolor. Tricolor puppies are black and very beautiful. And let's put one right up here. Collies have a, a, a beautiful um, touch of shading uh, along the top of their heads, framing their face. Now we have